Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome back to another Factorio Friday Facts... Friday Factorio Facts, uh, update. I said I wasn't gonna be doing these every week, I may have lied, um... Between the views and the comments, you guys seem to really enjoy these videos, and I actually enjoy them too, so I think I'm gonna keep making these, unless it's just really basic news, like, if there's another, um... If there's another piece of news like we got about the robots, I don't know if I'll make one about that, because it, you know, some of them are small, much smaller updates. Uh, but this one I definitely wanted to talk about because they talk a little bit more about quality, which has been a hot topic uh, in the last week. And then they talk about a little bit more of new features. So we'll go ahead and jump in here. Again, I'm not going to read every word. I am going to go a little bit more piece by piece, though, this time. Uh, because it's newer news and I haven't I've only read it once through myself so we're gonna at least skim through every little piece um, they start off by saying uh, they noticed a lot of misconceptions about the quality mechanic and they're gonna address some of the biggest ones so let's kind of roll through these one of them is that if you don't put quality modules anywhere everything's the same uh, some people apparently thought that everything got you know, quality and you just had all sorts of stuff everywhere. That would be very annoying. Um, that's like some mod packs we know about where <laughs> you get byproducts everywhere. Um, the random aspect seems to be upsetting people. And here they talk about uh, the difference between uh, like Settlers of Catan random as dice rolls versus, you know, the law of large numbers. And I think this is the same point I was making in the last video. Um, it's just a ratio, right? You're making thousands of iron plates. If 10% of your iron plates are uncommon, it doesn't really matter that it's a dice roll because you have thousands of them. The only time the random is going to feel um, actually random where you can get like a string of unlucky is going to be when you're trying to roll for the um, higher qualities of like equipment or or you just unlocked a new building and you're trying to get you know an epic version of it or something and it's kind of expensive and you can only make one or two a minute then you're gonna feel the randomness but more or less you're not gonna feel the randomness most of the time um, and you're not gonna be trying to hunt for something that's legendary if you have a you know 0.7% chance anyway so it's like, you're only going to want those tiny percent chances when you're making huge amounts of something. And in that case, it is going to average out over time and you won't care. So it's really, it's not going to be super common that the randomness is going to be frustrating. I, at least that's how I think about it. Um, I know like in Pinodons, for example, there are some frustrating randomness points because the thing you need next has a very small percent chance of failing and if it fails then it kind of screws you over and you got to redo some stuff but that's not really going to happen here it's like you don't need that epic power armor if you want epic power armor that's fine and if you have a, a process that gets you like a 10 percent shot at it yeah you're gonna have to do it 10 times but you might do it 10 times and still fail but like you'll probably succeed if you do it 15 or 20 times and so at some point like yeah it's a little annoying but i do think more or less that it's not going to be annoying. I don't think the percent chance will be frustrating. Anyway, I digress. Um, here they talk about the the grind is not really a problem and the unpredictability is not a problem because you just have a sheer number of output items and that's fine. Um, yeah. Game Boy, I would just make it using a higher quality ingredient that's produced in mass. Exactly. Like, if you really want to make sure you're going to get that epic armor, then just make the ingredients epic, because those are being produced in larger amounts. You know, at some point, it's more efficient to just randomly roll the higher thing than to make the lower thing, but yeah. Anyway, um, just read that one. The most simple approach is to produce all the ingredients in normal quality. Um, most of the fat factory typically produces non-quality stuff. In our playthroughs, the parts of the factory which we're dealing with the quality, with the quality, <laughs> with the quality mechanic, uh, were less than 5% of the whole factory. So it really does seem like it's not as huge of a mechanic as people are uh, interpreting it to be. In a super late game, yeah, you'll start to put quality everywhere. But I think in the in the mid to late game, you're only going to be doing some things quality, most things non-quality. Um, 
and the fact that there's not just one blueprint because it depends on the stage of the game and your dedication to quality is something we see as an improvement. So there will be lots of different blueprints now for builds depending on what qualities your inserters have, your assemblers have, um, your modules have. So, I mean, things like Helmod are gonna be way more complicated to calculate because you'll have to have quality for all the different bits and pieces. But in a way it's nice because now there's more variety and it, and it allows for players to be more uh, unique in the way that they play uh, versus each other, especially again in the vanilla Factorio. Uh, experience. Now, I'm really glad they addressed this one. So, um, he said, I used the it's optional argument, but I didn't mean it as an excuse for it's shitty, but it's okay because you don't have to use it. I've made this argument multiple times, both on my Discord and randomly on YouTube comments. A lot of people will defend a mechanic in a game because it's optional, which is not an argument. It's actually somewhat of a fallacy because you're saying it's not a problem because you don't have to use it. But by definition, that makes it a problem if not using it is the way to fix the problem, right? It's like if the solution is to not use it and just avoid it, then you're basically admitting something is wrong with it. And so the solution should never be to avoid something. If the mechanic is actually bad and you're like, well, it doesn't matter because you don't have to use it if you don't like it, it's like, that's not an argument about the mechanic. That's just an argument about gameplay in general. You don't have to play Factorio, you know, like ev technically everything's optional, but that's not really discussing the point at hand. So that's very much a red herring type of argument, and it's not a good argument. And I'm glad they address that, like, that's not what they're saying here. They're not arguing that it's optional as in you don't have to use it. Therefore, it doesn't have to be a good mechanic. What they're saying is, and, and they hear talk about like, you can't say it's optional as our gamer optimizer brains are programmed to progress to better stuff. And you don't just ignore better stuff because you don't like the mechanics. And so the best strategy needs to be fun. And that is a good proverb to have as a game dev. Um, you always want to make sure that, you know, there's no conflict of interest. Like the thing you want to do the most is also the thing that gives you the best results or at least close to the best. It's fine to have a little bit of flexibility there, but. You shouldn't be like, well, do I have fun or do I make a good factory? Those shouldn't be polar options, polar opposites. Uh, there are still players who prefer to play without beacons or, or modules, and there is some small value in the optionality um, for the quality mechanic. So I think it'll be about the same with quality mechanic. There are some people that never play with beacons. Well, there are gonna be some people that never play with quality. Like it is okay. There will be some people that don't play with it, um, but most people will, and it's good that they see that correctly, because I do think most people will use the quality mechanic. The last frequent opinion would be uh, that it would be better to use this opportunity to introduce a lot of interesting custom recipes to get different qualities. Avoiding uh, this was the cornerstone of the design. I can only design the game around what I enjoy, and I don't enjoy having to keep track of a huge number of unique recipes, which all work basically the same. I am a fan of this as well. I don't think that would have been a good solution. I think it's okay for a mod to do something like that, but not with five tiers of quality. Like it'd be one thing if there was two qualities, you know, regular and high quality, then maybe you have a few unique recipes and that's fine. But for five tiers of quality, no, you don't wanna have five different recipes for your tier three assembler. That's not fun. I don't think that would even be fun in a mod. I think it's only fun to have unique recipes for quality if it if it adds something significant to the game. Like right now, Pyanodons has four tiers for most buildings. So then theoretically, if uh, the mod support is there for the quality mechanic, you could replace the tiers of building with the quality mechanic and have different recipes for the different qualities. But then what you're looking at is a very, um, very different. That's bad grammar. You're looking at a different system because right now quality is a small boost. It's not a huge boost, right? Like quality on an assembler only makes it faster. It doesn't unlock new recipes. It doesn't change the power requirements. It doesn't change how many modules it can hold. Whereas in like Pyanodons, the tier one through four buildings, they're actually different buildings, right? They have different art color. They have different power and speed requirements and pollution. They have they usually have the same footprint. In fact, they always have the same footprint. The whole point is that you can, you know, paste an upgrade over it. But 
but like the quality is a smaller, uh, I don't know, scale of change than the tiers of buildings. And if there is proper mod support, yeah, exactly. It's a different color. It's totally different. Um, if there is proper mod support for, for what you can do with the quality mechanic, I could see mods like Pyanodons replacing tiers of buildings with quality altogether. Um, but I could also see certain mods wanting to have now two tiers. They have tiers of buildings and they have tiers of quality. Um, heck, Vanilla Factorio is still doing that. They have three tiers of assembler and five tiers of quality. That's technically 15 different assemblers that you can make um, rather than just the, you know, one, two, three, four. We'll see how mods approach this, but I'm curious to to see how that goes in, in a year. Oh, it's so far away. I'm sad. Anyway, um, what else do they talk about here? Helps downscale the time investment um, because you want to use a similar blueprint to produce different kinds of quality. I am a fan of that. Um, you don't have to make a different quality build for every single item. Um, overall, the design was driven by our own enjoyment. I believe there will be enough players who will enjoy the ride with us. I like that they didn't just back down and be like, oh, because there's so many people complaining, we're going to put a hold on this mechanic and remove it. I do, I do like that they're sticking to their guns. I think it's a good mechanic. I think, I think A, a lot of players just like it, and that's good. And then the players that don't like it, I think a lot of them will warm up to it fairly quickly. <coughs> fairly quickly. I think there was a bit of a knee-jerk reaction, and it's like, okay, we're all getting used to it. It'll be okay. Yada yada. Here they have a, a cool little gif um, of, you know, making high quality assemblers. And again, it's doing the recycling thing <clears throat> where actually what is happening? They explain it at the bottom. A simple build to create assembling machine three in quality. If there's more than 100 of any quality, it recycles them, hoping to get the next tier. The build only receives the basic ingredients from the normal factory and all of the quality related complications remain contained here. In the earlier stages, you'll likely have just a few of these builds for things you prioritize the most. So yeah, it basically just kind of stores up things and then recycles them, spits out the outputs and then makes more again. It's that simple. And so you kind of have different qualities of everything and yeah. Also, I didn't talk about this in the last video, I don't think, uh, but these auto output items like miners do on directly onto the belt. And currently that's not something that assemblers or smelters, these are actually smelters internally can do. So that's a pretty cool um, opportunity for modders to use because right now we don't have that option. And like Galdox mini assemblers, for example, which I'm about to play, uh, Galdox manufacturing, this is what he would really want for the mini assemblers. And ideally you could have a belt going into it as well, but that may or may not be possible. Anyway, on to the new news. Uh, that was all old talk about quality. My final thought on quality, I'm excited about it. I hope they give great mod support in every single little bit. Like every item can have quality or not. Every item can have each tier turned on or not you know it'd be nice if you do have five six seven qualities defined in the game it'd be nice if not every item had to have all seven of them like maybe you have some items that only have a normal and a legendary and other items have all seven you know whatever it just i hope they give all the options to modders but on to the new news discovering new materials um, they've found problems with how Factorio has been doing this for a while now with how planets and their unique resources are discovered. If a planet is unlocked by a technology, then that means <clears throat> the starting resources of the planet are also gated behind the same science packs. Because you only, let's just say red and green and blue science are all you need to get to the first planet. And then that would be saying like, well, of course, Excuse me. Well, of course you can only research like how to mine and process that new ore or how to even get to the planet with blue science. But then you can research ways to process the new material that you haven't even seen yet. And so that doesn't make sense. And they wanted the progress on each planet to result in a single new science pack. 
they get into a bit of a chicken or egg situation. Do we do the science pack first? Do we need the processing steps first? How do we make both of them require each other? You could make the science pack available immediately, but then it's not too interesting because it doesn't include new processing steps. You can see the issue here. And they wanted the science pack to be the primary export for each planet, which I think is cool to know that uh, that's kind of a new piece of information we have about the expansion is that like you'll get to a planet, you'll work with a new material and whatever challenges are on that planet, and you'll start exporting that science pack in most cases. In order to prevent planets from just being simple mining outposts, we wanted to make sure most of the processing contributes to such science packs. Uh, they tried various forms like temporary science packs, special entities like temporary laboratories. They were all just messy. So they ended up going to trigger technologies. And that is something that I think is a really cool idea. Uh, the concept is that when you do something, that is the same as researching the technology. So here we're skipping ahead a little bit, but all you have to do is mine crude oil or pump crude oil, I would say, same thing. And that unlocks the oil refinery, the chem plant, and your solid fuel and uh, petroleum recipes. And so you don't actually research it, you just do it and that unlocks the things and then you you can't build oil refineries or research down the oil processing tech tree until you've got oil. It makes so much sense. Gone are the days where you can research 15 things to do with oil before you even, you know, pumped your first liter of oil. Uh, so here they kind of talk about a few technology triggers such as mining an entity, crafting an item or fluid, and launching a rocket with a certain item in it. Mods are gonna make great use of this, I think. Uh, Anachrony, the mod maker of Nullius, already does something like this. I haven't played Nullius since that was added, but he has a similar system where something is kind of gated behind doing the thing rather than just researching the thing. Um, this will make a lot more sense with specific examples once we show you the actual planets, which means they're gonna spoil the actual planets, which is exciting. Um, and we can apply this elsewhere. As we're sure you remember, there are times even in the base game where you discover new resources like oil and uranium, and just like researching processing for a new resource on a different planet, it's similarly strange for the same reasons that you can research deep into oil tech tree while you haven't even seen a crude oil patch yet, or unlocking nuclear reactors without having met uranium. <clears throat> Yeah, Game Boy, I'm sure someone will make a story mode for sure, which is going to be cool. And yeah, Nolius already does this, which is great. I need to replay Nolius at some point. Uh, this helps prevent the situation in the green science tier where you've researched far ahead of uh, what your factory can currently process and then later feel discouraged from seeing all the piled up recipes to work through. That is like Factorio experience one, you know, 1.0, like that is just how it feels. So I love that they're doing this. Uh, when you crash land on the very first planet, why does the player know how to craft steam engines, inserters, and transport belts? It always feels much better in games when your progression, progression starts as low as possible and you can earn all of the things in the process. It makes it feel much more deserved in the end. So they can create new technologies for basic things like pipes, power generation, labs, and the automation science pack, which is how Nullius starts. I loved Nullius's early game. You start with like literally nothing and you have to research even the ability to craft your buildings again, which is super cool. So yeah, like you need to craft 50 iron plates before you can even get steam power. You need to craft 10 copper plates before you can make copper wire and power poles. Um, I like that a lot. Some don't need to be available at the very beginning, so we can add them into their own new red science technologies like electric mining or what else did they name? Radar or repair packs. Uh, here they mentioned steel axe requires steel plates. That's a good change, I think. As a result, the following will be all of your starting recipes. Now, I also think I'm interested in what's going on here. Did they just modify this? Like, did they copy paste things? Cause look, they have all the categories open at the same time. And I'm very curious if that's just like 
a visual modification they did or if there's a new way to look at your uh, crafting recipes in the expansion. It's kind of a, an interesting picture they gave us here. <laughs> when you told your brother you'd have to research steam power, he complained. Yeah, it's only 50 iron plates. Exactly. Um, you'd rather that they bring back the iron axe? No. Having an equipable axe was pointless. I think removing it made a lot of sense. Um, Acceptable weirdness threshold. They named that and they had to address it in space age. So the improvements impacted the base game and we're certain the mods will make good use of this as well, which is very true. They also talk about research queue always being on. I was literally talking about this when I started Galdox manufacturing because I forgot to turn research queue on which is uh, this exact sentence. A major source of frustration was when you'd start the game, play for a while, only to realize that you forgot to enable the research queue. So, yeah. Honestly, I just, I don't think there's a lot of good reasons to not have it, and I think they've finally agreed. They did say, where did they say it? Um... Yeah, here, some playtesting of the game with the feature enabled led us to feel that it had some significant drawbacks, which they talk about there, I guess, which was a very long time ago. Probably a little bit uh, actually related to what they mentioned up uh, up here. They probably felt like the research queue kind of led players to just chew through all of the possible research, and then they ended up not feeling like they could I don't know. There's something about when a research finishes, you want to go do that thing right now. But if they're constantly finishing, you just have this huge backlog. So I'm guessing that's part of what was negative about the research queue. But the new system, <clears throat> the new system is going to gate a lot of things so that you can't just plow through all of your red and green technology at once because it's like, oh, I do have to go get oil before I can do this chunk of red green. And then I have to go get uranium before I can do this chunk of chemical science or whatever. And then finally, they talk about productivity, infinite researches. Woohoo! So that's really nice. Um, something else to do with your infinite science in the late game. And it'll reduce the resource pressure as the game goes along. Mining productivity is great and it works very well, but it doesn't give the player much choice in the end game. <clears throat> the other infinite technologies are more specialized and mostly combat. Worker robot speed is really the only one. So they added a recipe productivity research, which can increase the built-in productivity of certain recipes, such as steel, I love hearing that, processing units and rocket control units. I mean, making something like steel more productive is a big deal, right? Like 10% more steel for the same inputs completely changes your factory and saves you tons of iron. So I'm excited about these changes. Um, they also wanted to let you unlock something super powerful for the end game. And each level will research the built, increase the built-in productivity of your labs. And so they're even gonna have lab productivity being a late game thing that you can increase. And here they give us a little bit more teaser. It'll require some of the end game resources of which details will come in some future FFFs. As always, let us know what you think. So overall, great update. I definitely appreciate how they addressed the quality concerns that players have had. I was I was worried they would just kind of not address it at all, but they did, and I feel like they addressed it really well. I'm sure players will still have complaints. I do think most players will warm up to it, especially once they play with it. I'm guessing it plays out more fun than it looks. And I think it looks fun, but... In any case, this new technology gating is also a great, uh, great system. I think it's only gonna make the game better allows for more flexibility with mods. Research queue being on is just a no brainer. I, especially as a mod player, like this is just great. No reason to hate that. And then product <clears throat> productivity researches is also great. Something else that mods will use, I'm sure. So yeah, uh, I think that's gonna be it for this FFF video. And I will either see you guys next week or in a couple weeks, depending on what they what they share next, next Friday, but just can't breathe today, apparently. <laughs> As always, let me know what you guys think in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.